everyone, and I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet again another episode of My Orchid Adventure with who else but me, Maria Young. Okay, so in today's episode, what we're going to be doing is updating you on some much anticipated orchid experiments that we have done using, of course, the rooting hormone that is found in your local garden centers, usually the ones that are found in your regular garden plants. I have some good news for you folks. A lot of you guys have chimed in and have actually told me that you guys have done this before. And yes, indeed, it has been successful. So yes, this can actually be used on your orchids as well. Now also, what I want to tell you guys, I want you guys to plan ahead of time when you guys are doing these kind of experiments. And I'm going to tell you exactly why it's that important to do so, because I've made a mistake twice in a row by waiting later into the year to do my orchid experiments. But you guys have to already pre-plan ahead of time, knowing that it normally takes about two to three months before you guys are even going to notice any noticeable changes in your orchids because you guys already know that in orchids they can become very slow growers and also very slow dyers as well. So if you're waiting later into the year to do your experiments, you're going to bump into the colder season, your autumn, and of course also your winter season. Now you guys know what happens during the winter time, right? Well, most of your orchids will go into somewhat of a dormancy period. Now I'm not talking about full and complete dormancies such as your catacetum type orchids. I'm just talking about your rest period in most orchids where you're not going to notice a considerable amount of growth. You're not going to notice them flourishing in their foliage and also in their root system, you're definitely going to see a slowing down in growth in your orchids. So of course, if you do your experiments and then you run into the colder season, your orchids are going to grow at a very slow rate. So in that case, you're not going to know if it's not working in your orchid or perhaps your orchids are just trying to get some rest. So of course, Folks, the best time to do your orchid experiments is in your spring season and I would recommend later in your spring season. So your orchids will have the full amount of this summer season, your warmer months where they are just really flourishing and growing during that time, that they're going to have that whole summer time to go ahead and really bounce back for you or have that prime condition to really uh, grow and exceed in your experiment. So that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to have prime conditions also in our experiment so that we can have some successful results. And folks, again, I kind of waited too late. We're into the autumn season, going into our winter season. So yeah, I'm not quite sure exactly on the results, but you know what? We did start these projects and I definitely want to show you what's going on. You guys have requested. So of course, because the demand was great, I have to give you the results. And that is what I am going to show show you today. So let's go ahead and get that underway already, right? Right. Now, if you guys have been following my videos, you guys already know that I have several different techniques and method that I use to promote root growth. So definitely there are several ways and I show you that in my videos. If you have not seen them before, go ahead and click like right here and it'll take you to those videos so you can see the methods that have worked for me. And this mission at hand, folks, all started because I was having many a conversations on Facebook in regards to how to promote root growth. And many of you guys have had many, many different issues about your orchids on that subject. Now, one particular conversation that I did have mentioned that there may be a product that we could use in regards to trying to promote some of these roots. Now, of course, the method was to use a substance that's normally commonly used for garden plants. Now as we know orchids and garden plants are two separate animals so of course I was unsure that it would even work. But you guys know folks I am quite the adventurous grower. I definitely don't like to say no to trying out new and different methods. I am willing to try something at least one time. Okay so with that in mind I want to talk to you a little bit further on the substance that we are going to be using on our 
our experiment today. This is actually a rooting hormone in powder form that is commonly found in your garden centers. Now this is created for your garden plants, again I said garden plants, where you would actually take the clippings of a garden plant and you would take it and of course you're seeing that powder like form and you would swirl it around in here of course ensuring that the whole clipping area that you want it to root at is covered with this powder and then of course afterwards you would carefully place that cutting into soil. So that's how you would normally use it for garden plants but of course we are using it on our struggling orchid plants today. Okay folks, and the first one on our list is this Brassavola nodosa. Now you guys know this has been in recovery mode for about a year now. Indeed, it did not show any signs of any type of root growth at all for an entire year. Although it did stay green and it did show some growth in the orchid itself, it just didn't show any growth in the root system at all. So what we decided to do is to add this chemical powder to one gallon of water and it was one teaspoon of this powder that we used to that gallon of water and then we of course allowed this to saturate for a couple of hours and what I said I would do is I would continue to water it with that one gallon of water and one teaspoon of powder every time I watered it but of course you know what I didn't quite follow by the rules I think I did it only one time more and then that was it and then I just started watering it as normal so yeah I do apologize got a little bit lazy there so that could be also a contributing factor but I also spoke to an individual by the name of Gape G-A dot P-E that told me to stay encouraged in case it did not work for some of my orchids for the simple fact that indeed with the rooting hormone you have to have some type of potency I mean it has to be really really strong for it to work and as you guys know with the mixture of water one teaspoon to a gallon it was very very weakened it was not potent at all so that could also be a contributing factor that yes we did not notice that much in the results so let me go ahead and talk about the results right here if we look throughout this orchid you are not seeing any type of new root growth at all unfortunately folks unfortunately not a single root growth here and of course you are seeing some green here which I really have to say that's the only reason why it's been staying alive it has a few live roots here and the rest of them are totally kaput kapui they are dead but yes it's enough to continue in its growth because the new growths on here indeed have continued to grow so that's one good sign but folks back to the drawing board on this one we're actually going to saturate this entire area with that rooting powder and then we're going to go ahead and put it in complete sphagnum moss and see if that can get it to bounce back or at least show some sign of growth in the roots so we're going to finger cross on that and back to the drawing board on this i cannot say this was successful at all as as a matter of fact no evidence of it growing any new roots so at this time folks this was unsuccessful but we will continue on the mission with this brassavola nadosa and the next one oh sorry about that folks yeah the next one on our list is this pathetic case right here this is the eridus orchid and yeah when we got to this this was in horrific condition it was on its last legs and i kind of knew that there was no hope for this orchid but as you guys know i never give up until the bitter end we will fight it through and unfortunately in this case this was too far gone we saturated the sphagnum moss with the chemical that we made that one teaspoon to a gallon in that water saturated the sphagnum moss and we were just really hoping for dear life that this would survive but this 
was a lost cause. And again, another orchid that was unsuccessful in this experiment. And indeed, this has gone to orchid heaven. Rest in peace, beloved orchid. Rest in peace. And this right here is our beloved dendrobium that we did the rooting hormone experiment on. Of course, using the sphagnum moss that used the chemical format of the rooting hormone. Again, one teaspoon to a gallon. And we use this netting right here to wrap this cakey in hopes that we could get it to grow its roots. Now, I have to tell you, I have not even looked underneath here. But I also have to tell you, I have not been consistent with watering it with that rooting hormone chemical either. I have watered it and sprayed it down, but even with that, I wasn't so good with doing it on a regular basis, and there was several days that this did completely dry out. So again, I'm not quite sure what we're going to find, folks, but keep your fingers crossed as I go ahead and untie this ever so carefully. Again, this is the very first time I'm looking in here and I'm kind of afraid and scared and worried all at the same time. Da -na -na -na. And here we go. That netting that we cut up is released. And here we go, we're taking out the sphagnum. And uh-oh guys, uh-oh guys, do you see anything? Oh man, oh man, oh man. I absolutely do not see a thing on here either. Isn't that crazy? It's been like, what, about two months and no roots at all. Oh man, oh man. Okay, so this also has been unsuccessful even with our sphagnum wrapped around here. How crazy is that? So what we're gonna do now, folks, on this one, we're gonna also saturate this area with that rooting hormone chemical, and then we're gonna go ahead and put the sphagnum moss, again, tying this up, and hopefully we'll get some better results. But yeah, again, no evidence at all of the growth. I promise I'm going to be a good girl this time as we go back into the drawing board with this also. And in case you guys are wondering, I do want to let you know every time I'm touching another orchid, I am spraying my hand down with Listerine, which is a sanitizer, antibacterial and fungal, and of course kills off germs as well. So indeed, whenever I touch another orchid, I wash off my hands with this Listerine. So safe practices is indeed promoted, okay? Stay safe, guys. Don't infect your orchids with anything, okay? Okay, folks, and the last one on our list is this Renanthera that was not doing so well. And if we take a close look, you're noticing a lot of wrinkling in the leaf area. But good news, folks, is there is a new leaf growing without any wrinkles. So it does appear that it is still alive and well and still trying to thrive. So let's go ahead and take a look underneath here and see if the rooting hormone worked on this. Now, of course, you guys know we completely saturated the bottom half of the stem area on this Renanthera with direct contact with this rooting hormone. And indeed, afterwards, we put it in the sphagnum moss that was also saturated with the chemical that we mixed with the rooting hormone as well. So let us take a closer look. Oh, please, let there be at least one that was a success. Woo, woo, woo. And here we go, folks. Here we go. Okay, here it is. Let me take the sphagnum moss away. And can you see this, guys? Can you see that indeed there is this root that has grown here considerably? All the root that we had was these little guys right here. And they were so teeny and tiny and they were stunted for three months or even longer than that, they had not shown any signs of growth at all. And since we put that rooting hormone, this one in particular has completely grown. Now we did this the right way with this Renanthera where we just put direct contact with the rooting hormone. 
And that's basically, I think, the importance of knowing when you're using that rooting hormone, it definitely has to be very potent and you can't saturate it so much as I did. And I was just being a little bit cautious. I didn't know how it worked and I definitely didn't want to overdo it and overdose it with that rooting hormone. But now that I know, that is how I'm going to have to do it, folks, is direct contact. And to just give you a better look at the new root tips that I've started growing. This one is actually an entire root. This is new growth right here. But as you can see here, those are stunted roots and you're seeing the tips that are growing. Also right here in this case, we turn it around right there, you're seeing that root tip also growing. So indeed, a successful experiment for the Renanthera. Very happy and very pleased. We are going to place this in sphagnum moss and now just grow it as normal. I would say, at last, finally, one that was indeed successful, folks. So it can indeed work. And as you guys have already said, you have already tried it and indeed it does work work this rooting hormone so that's just another way for you to promote root growth especially if you are seeing that no root growth is growing at all this is another way that you can encourage root growth on your orchids and if you guys have done a method that is not so common, please share with us how you also promoted root growth. We would like to know as well because it's all about learning and growing folks. So indeed, let us know what you've done to encourage root growth and be sure to go ahead and post it like below. And there you have it folks. Those are the results of our experiments. And of course, whether they be good or bad, you can walk away from this knowing that you tried everything that you could for your orchids and that is what it's really about folks we are trying to find new and innovative ways of course ways that's gonna make it so much more easier for you guys to grow and also rescue your orchids now of course good or bad you put them all together those are the facts of orchid life okay sometimes you win sometimes you lose but of course the fight continues and you always know that just as long as you're passionate about your orchids you indeed will never give up on them no matter what and I'm hoping that is what you learn from my experiments here and also the experiments that I've done in the past I never give up and I always put on my creative orchid hat and indeed try to find out new and different methods and ways that we can rescue and continue to flourish with our orchids growing on every level of our lives because you guys know because they are our passion they bring us so much happiness and joy and because of that again we will try whatever we can to live prosperously with our orchids and I'm hoping that you guys are enjoying each and every one of your orchid experiments experiences regardless to if they're good or bad because each and and every experience brings about revelation, enlightenment, and new discoveries about yourself and also with orchids. Happy growing everyone on every single level. And I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another Orchid Adventure. Definitely appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And if you guys like this video, please be sure to give it like two thumbs up. And of course, if you guys want to stay tuned to the latest and greatest news of my Orchid Adventures, please be sure to subscribe. And I have some very exciting news coming up and a lot of great experiments also that I'm going to be trying here in the future. So you definitely don't want to miss out. And of course, you guys know I have done tons of experiments, so I still have to do those updates as well. So you definitely want to stay tuned. Also, I want to let you guys know I am on Facebook. So if you want to join me on my Facebook adventures as well, I suggest you do that. And that is at My Orchid Adventures right on Facebook. I love you guys so much. You guys already know. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Indeed, I love you all. Mwah.